Welcome to another episode in our series on material design components. Following on from that episode on the basics of material theming, today we're going to build upon that and add a dark theme to an app. So you might have heard about dark theme and wondering why you should add it to your app. Well, we think there are a few reasons. Firstly, dark themes can help reduce eye strain for your users by matching the user's ambient lighting conditions. So during the night, your device will be dark and then during the day, it will be light. Secondly, dark themes can help save power on lots of popular devices. So if your device has an OLED display, and lots do these days, each of those pixels you're seeing is individually lit. Using a dark theme means that those pixels are lit less, which ends up saving power overall, which results in happy users. Also, Android 10 added a new system setting, which allows users to switch their device's theme. As more apps support dark theme, apps which don't are looking increasingly out of place on devices. And finally, and perhaps the most important, is that it is because your users want a dark theme. Dark theme was consistently one of the most requested features in Android for a very long time, and that means apps too. Right, so that's the sales pitch over. Now let's look at some code. So the app we're going to be using today is called the Reply, and it's a material study app, um, which is an email and communication app. Um, so here you can see that we have two emulators running. On the left, uh, we have one that's running with the system dark theme enabled. And on the right, we have one with just the light theme enabled. So we'll quickly open settings. You'll see the two different themes in action. A uh, bit of a top tip for you. Um, if you can't use multiple devices, there's also the dark theme quick setting, which you can add, which allows you to easily flick between the two themes. So if we run the material uh, study app now, so you can see that the app has a light theme on both devices, um, and that is because the version of Reply that we're using here only has a light theme. If we quickly run through the app, uh, the main screen is a list. Uh, it's an email inbox, so it contains a list of emails, and as you scroll, you can see the email list. If we click on one, uh, it opens up and expands into the detail screen. At the bottom, we have the app bar. You can see this bit here. Uh, if we click on the fab, the compose fab, it opens up into a compose screen. And we go back out of that. At the bottom, there's also one of the actions. You can open up a bottom navigation drawer, and that contains a list of folders and labels. So that's a quick run through of the app. Now, our task by the end of this video is to add a dark theme to Reply. Now, hopefully, you caught our previous video on the basics of material theming, where Nick covered guidance around color, topography, and shape. Well, material also has guidance on how to design a dark theme. And that's also available on the material.io site. Now, we're not going to cover all of the bits of guidance on that page uh, because there's quite a lot. Instead, we're going to follow the design created by Liam, who is one of the designers in the material advocacy team. Uh, you can find his crafting a dark theme video link below for more of the, if you want to find out more of the theory behind the design. The team also released uh, that same design as a Figma prototype, uh, which you can see here. So some of the key differences you can see is that the primary color has changed. So from a slightly darker orange, it's gone to like a lighter yellow, you can see here. Uh, but also the bottom app bar has changed color, uh, gone from a blue to a gray. Right, back to the code. Um, so we're going to be taking a look at two different ways to implement a dark theme. Uh, and we're going to start with something called false dark. Force Dark is a feature added in Android 10, which allows you to very quickly implement a dark theme in any app. It works by the system analyzing each view in your app and then automatically applying a dark theme before it's drawn to the screen. Um, you can think of it as like a simplified color inversion. It tries to work out what the background and foreground colors are and then does like a targeted inversion for text colors and surface colors and that kind of stuff. But what it does try and do is, is avoid photography. So you don't want those to be inverted. Um, to enable force dark in your app, we just need to add one line to our theme. So here we've got our themes.xml open, and this is our theme, our theme.reply. So here we're going to add a new item called Android Force Dark Allowed, and then set it to true. Now if we run it, and you can see that on, on our device, which has a dark theme, we're now seeing a dark theme version of Reply. And hopefully you can see that it's actually done a pretty good job. Um, it's converted all of the surface colors. Uh, the text colors are all nicely uh, inverted. So we're now light text on dark. 
uh, but it still kept the photography. So all of these and the avatars, also the iconography, these icons, uh, illustrations, they've been kept at their original color, which is what you want. Um, it's kept the bottom at bar color the same, or at least very close. Uh, but one thing it has changed is the primary color. So you can see that we've gone from this kind of mid yellow uh, and it's drawn a very dark yellow. If we bring the design up now on the left, you can see that the primary color should actually be a bit lighter than the light theme. And the bottom at bar should be going, uh, so a dark surface color rather than the blue that we currently have. But I do think it's amazing that you can achieve this just by setting one line in your theme. Um, I see this as a great way to rapidly release a dark theme for devices running Android 10 and above. Uh, but to fully achieve our design, which you can see on the left there, uh, we're going to need to move to the second method of implementing a dark theme, uh, which is by using Material Design Components' theme system. So back to our theme. Uh, before we begin, we're going to remove that four star allowed line because we're no longer using that feature. Um, Material Components uh, provides us with a special type of theme called Day Night. Um, and that automatically changes its base theme based on the system theme setting itself. Um, so our first step is to change our base theme. So you can see here, we're extending from theme.materialcomponents.light and we're gonna change it to day night instead. So if we run that and we can see that very little has actually changed here. Um, and that is because reply's theme is quite extensive. So you can see that it's set in a lot of the color attributes available from material theming which is overriding all of that uh, automatic behavior from the day-night theme itself. To fix that, we're gonna need to extract these color attributes so that they're only used on the light theme. Um, now there's a couple of ways we can organize our themes to support this. I'm gonna show you one way, but there are others. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is change our theme to be called base.theme.reply. And then we're gonna create a new theme called theme.reply and then make it extend the base theme. Um, then we're going to move all of the kind of light theme specific attributes into that theme.reply. So we'll just do that, cut those and paste them there. Uh, there are some others, so we probably want to set the status bar color as well. That, that looks like it's been overridden for light. And then the rest should be probably okay. All right, so this will be used in our light theme. And then we're going to need to create a new themes.xml, this time in values-night. And if we're, we're going to create, well, we're going to copy that light theme over and then just remove all these attributes for now. Um, so we make that theme also extend from base.theme.reply. Um, and what that means is that the base theme here um, it contains all of the common stuff between the light and the dark themes, which allows us to reuse everything. Which means that the theme.reply only contains the specific stuff for light or for the dark theme itself. Now if we run, you can see that we now have a dark theme. Now this doesn't match the dark theme that we uh, want from our design, because this is now going to be using the baseline dark theme from Material, but you know it's a step forward. So our dark theme now has the values from the baseline theme. Now we need to update it to be from our design. Um, so here I'm actually just going to fast forward a little bit and paste in the values. Um, so these are taken from the uh, theme from the from the design from Liam, um, and they're nothing special. They're just different values. So instead of using in the light theme in the primary, we use the blue 700, just in the dark theme, we're using blue 200. Um, so for each of these, we're just using the appropriate color for dark. Now, if we run, you'll see that we're getting closer, like the color primary is the right color now. Um, but the problem is that some things still aren't right. So you can see that the bottom at bar, that should really be using the dark surface rather than the primary color. And also we now can no longer see the status bar color icons. Um, and that is because in the base theme, we're setting it to be light content. So this one's actually pretty easy to fix. Um, MDC exposes an attribute called is light theme. 
And so we can set this, we can set this window light status bar to match this. And then it will be light when we're in a light theme and then dark when we're in a dark theme. So perfect. So if we run that now quickly, you can see that we can now actually see the status bar content, which is perfect. Right, so our final step is to fix this app bar color. Um, so here we're using, as you can see, we're using the, the uh, primary color, um, whereas really on the design, as you can see on the left, what we want to use is the surface color instead. Um, so the reason why the app is currently doing that is because the style in the layout is currently using the bottom app bar dot colored style. Now colored means that it's going to use the primary color as its background, whereas what we want is to use the primary color in light, but then the surface color in dark. Now, luckily, the Materials and Components team has already thought about this and has provided a special style called Primary Surface, which does exactly what we want. We can see that the app bar is now using the uh, surface color, which is perfect, that's what we want. The issue is that if you open the app bar now, the content color of the items is wrong. It's, it's using dark text on a dark surface, so obviously it's not very readable. Um, so the way this app is built is that it uses a color state list for all of that content. And this one here called navigation draw content. And the reason why it's wrong is that it's because it's using the color on primary um, attributes for that content color, which will work in light, but it won't work in dark. Um, so again, we're gonna switch that to use color on primary surface instead. Um, this is again uh, brought by the MDC team, um, and we'll automatically switch to the right color based on the theme. So we run that now. We can now see that the content color is correct. So if you scroll up and down, we now have the right color. And that's it for today's episode. We saw how to implement a dark theme using both the force dark functionality available for Android 10, as well as manually crafting a dark theme using the material design component styling system. We've attached a link to the accompanying blog post in the description of this video, if you like this video, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. And that's it. Thanks for watching.